Hi everyone, and welcome to Jane Talks Buffy, where I'll be talking about and reviewing all the episodes of Buffy the Vampire Slayer in order. Today, I'm looking at Season 5, Episode 7, Fool for Love. We begin the episode with Buffy fighting this hairstyle choice, but he's not messing around and stakes her instead, and into the credits we go. Buffy makes a run for it, but the vampire stops her, so Riley has to rescue her and takes her back home to patch her up. Riley is a little surprised that only one vampire was able to beat her, and Dawn bursts in, warning that Joyce is coming and covers for her. Come on, who's the man? You are. A very short, annoying man. So Buffy shows her her injury and swears her to secrecy. Riley offers to go on patrol and brings the Scoobies along, who are really loud and unhelpful. Are we not being covert enough? We're sorry. Sorry. While Buffy researches Slayers with Giles, but it's not going well. Slayer called, blah blah, great protector, blah blah, scary battles, blah blah, oops she's dead. Buffy wants to know why a Slayer's last battle was her last battle, but Giles points out there's no one left to tell the tale. No one except... Ow. And she asks him how he killed two Slayers. Spike isn't particularly interested and instead wants food and notices Buffy's injury before we flash back to Spike sounding like Wesley writing poetry and making eyes at this woman Cecily. This dick face reads his poetry aloud, which is to be fair, a bit shit. And we get an origin for his nickname of William the Bloody and his method of torture, so that's fun. Spike approaches Cecily, who tells him to sod off when she finds out his poetry is directed at her. Please stop. And says he's beneath her, which is rather rude, and he runs out upset, bumping into three familiar vampires. Drusilla pays him a visit, being creepy as per usual, before biting him. And we all know how this story goes. Riley spots the walking hair choice, so they all creep up, but Riley says it's too dangerous right now. And speaking of, Angel is mad that Spike is getting them all into trouble, and they get into a fight where Angel mentions the Slayer. What's a Slayer? Spike admits he became obsessed with the idea of Slayers. Lesson the first. A Slayer must always reach for her weapon. I've already got mine. And he tracks the current one down during the Boxer Rebellion in China. And they have a pretty badass fight, but she gets unlucky and he manages to kill her, which impresses Drusilla, so they go to Bone. And even Angel has to begrudgingly congratulate him. But I'm pretty sure four clearly out of place white people wouldn't be able to stand around chatting in the middle of the Boxer Rebellion without running into trouble. Riley goes back to the crypt to stake the vampire before deepening a grenade and running like hell, which kills the other four. And Buffy and Spike get into a fight outside the bronze, where we get a cool transition to a badass subway train fight in New York, with the action cutting back and forth. The Slayer gets the upper hand, but Spike gets lucky yet again and breaks her neck, stealing her coat and offering to kill Buffy if she ever wants it. Buffy doesn't like this information and Spike kind of comes on to her. So Buffy tells him he's beneath her and oh, now he's all sad. He angrily loads a shotgun, which Harmony tries to talk him out of, but he's determined. And then a flashback shows Drusilla yelling at him after their departure from season two. And this guy apparates out of nowhere, but nice callback to Lover's Walk. Drusilla says he's obsessed with Buffy and she finds Joyce packing because she has to go overnight for a CAT scan at the hospital. Buffy goes outside to cry as Spike approaches and he has a change of heart and instead comforts her to end the episode. I used to love this episode and don't get me wrong, it's a good episode, but I think overexposure to it over the years, along with it raising a lot of questions, has lessened it in my mind. It's good to have an episode that isn't just a bunch of dawn glory setup, and it's nice Spike gets a backstory, even though I hate flashbacks. But Buffy comes across quite unlikable until you and Spike feel sorry for her at the end. This episode is full of references, callbacks, and foreshadowing, so I suggest you watch it for yourselves to get the full effect. But Cecily becomes the vengeance demon known as Halfrek, friend to Anya, the New York Slayer, Spike Killed, is tied to a character and storyline in Season 7. Beneath You is a recurring theme, even having an episode name for it, again in Season 7. And Drusilla even predicts Spike's fate way ahead of time. But as I said, I have a lot of questions, and let's start with Angel. What the fuck is up with Angel? He acts all cautious and responsible, like he's got a soul, but he doesn't. 
The main flashback takes place in 1880, so he should be full on and jealous at this point, especially seeing as Drusilla is a vampire and we know he tortured her as a human before turning her, and he doesn't get his soul until 1898. But then the Boxer Rebellion flashback took place in 1900, so why is Angel acting exactly the same when his soul had been restored by this point? And he should have gone into hiding or whatever they said he did after it got restored. Buffy has never timeline continuityed very well. My other big question is how the fuck is the world not completely overrun with vampires by now? The Slayer is one girl in all the world. Buffy in Sunnydale, Chinese Slayer in China, Nikki in New York, India Cohen in Japan. So who keeps the vampire population down in the rest of the world? I know Sunnydale has the Hellmouth, but Buffy wasn't called there, Joyce happened to move there. So either there are a lot of freelance vampire hunters all over the world who are getting absolutely no credit, or Slayers don't make much of a difference in the grand scheme of things. Now let's talk about Spike, and I find him a much better character than Angel. Angel without a soul is a massive dick face killing machine. Spike, without a soul, still cares, still has compassion, and while Angelus would back down from a fight because he knew he would get beaten, Spike will back down from a fight because he doesn't want to hurt them. Even when he didn't have his chip, Spike was willing to talk or make a deal, and I feel this makes him more well-rounded as a character than Angel. Finally, what I find is really important for this episode is what Spike was saying. Buffy can kill thousands of vampires, but it only takes one vampire to do the job for the rest of them. Spike didn't kill those slayers because he was really skilled, he just got lucky, or they got unlucky. A split second of distraction or lapse in concentration is all it took, which is why that run-of-the-mill vampire was able to almost kill Buffy. All it takes is one second and your life is over, which is probably the scariest thought in the whole show, and why Buffy is trying so hard to do better than her predecessors. We have eight deaths to add to our list. Two humans, the Chinese Slayer and Nikki Wood, both killed by Spike. One transformation, Spike, who was sired by Drusilla. Not Angel as stated in School Hard. He's Spike's grandsire. And five vampires, hairstyle choice staked by Riley and four others who got the shit blown into them also by Riley. That brings our running total to five humans, one transformation, 15 vampires and four demons. So there you have it. That was Fool for Love. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below or come say hi on social media. If you enjoyed this video then please hit that like button, it really does mean a lot, or consider subscribing if you want to be sired by my channel. Alternatively, feel free to check out my other YouTube channels. Thank you so much for watching, I'll speak to you soon, and don't let the vampires bite.